welcome to the Week in Review, the show that brings you up to date on the week that was. Here are the top stories. Government's 2G auction falls flat. Air India looks at a new way to slash its debt. And the Finance Ministry and RBI disagree over banking licenses. We begin with the much-awaited 2G auction which left the government both surprised and disappointed. The auction ended on Wednesday evening, meeting less than one-third of its target. All in all, the government got bids amounting to 9,407 crores. The bids were for 1,800 MHz spectrum in 18 out of the 22 telecom circles on offer. The government had expected to get 30,000 crores from the 2G auction. But Telecom Minister Kapil Sibyl defended his government's policies, saying they were bound by court decisions. Sibyl added that if the government had been given greater leeway, it could have got larger bids. The latest 2G auction came after the Supreme Court cancelled 122 telecom licenses in February after a CAG report. Switching to aviation, struggling national carrier Air India is looking at a fresh way to reduce its debt. Mint has learned that the airline is looking to monetize some of its real estate to raise money. Air India will hire real estate consultant DTZ International Property Advisors. It will look at selling land as well as leasing or developing it. Air India is hoping to make 500 crores this fiscal and up to 5,000 crores in a decade. Air India has a debt of about 44,000 crores and its accumulated losses from the last five years are about 27,000 crores. And it would seem Air India is not alone. The country's biggest real estate company, DLF, is looking to sell off some of its own assets to slash its debt. It's currently negotiating the sale of its Amund Resorts project. It also plans to sell its wind energy operations by March end. DLF expects to raise about 5,000 crores through these and a few other sales. Its net debt on the 30th of September was 23,220 crores. Moving on, the rift between the finance ministry and RBI only seemed to grow wider during the week. It all started on Thursday when Finance Minister P. Chidamram said RBI could start issuing new bank licenses. Chidamram said the process would take up to eight months and that the government would push through changes to its banking rules by then. Chidamram said the Banking Regulation Act would be amended during the upcoming winter session of Parliament. The Reserve Bank retorted the very next day. Its governor, D. Subarao, said issuing licenses was not a simple matter and that RBI would have to wait until some new rules are in place. At the heart of the Reserve Bank's concerns is the power to supersede a bank's board. RBI wants the power before considering banking licenses for industrial houses. But that means the Banking Regulations Act will need to be changed by Parliament. RBI and the Finance Ministry have previously been at loggerheads over monetary policy and inflation. And speaking of inflation, D. Subha Rao has also reiterated his concerns over the issue. On Friday, he said inflation remained high despite indications that it could moderate. Subarao also said RBI was unlikely to ease its monetary policy anytime soon. Figures released on Wednesday showed the wholesale price index for October was at 7.45%. In September, it stood at 7.81%. And here are some stories in brief. Industrial production has shrunk during a time of festive spending. The index of industrial production dropped 0.4% in September. In contrast, the revised figure for August is 2.3%. India's trade gap also continues to widen with its merchandise exports falling. Exports dropped 1.6% in October to $23.2 billion. Imports meanwhile climbed 7.4% to $44.2 billion. Those figures leave India with a trade deficit of close to $21 billion. And finally, the government seems to be paying more attention to what Google users are doing online. A Google report on Wednesday said the Indian government made 2,319 requests for about 3,467 accounts in the first half of 2012. That's a 33% increase over the same period last year. The figures from Google put India in second place behind the US in terms of government requests. 75 of the requests from India were for removing content offensive to religions. And that's all we have for you. Thanks for watching.